Hello, and welcome to the talk about Fedora Workstation State of Gaming talk. I hope you're just as excited as I am uh, with regards to the Linux gaming. I'll share the link to the slide deck in the chat section. There you go. And hop in, being hop in, somehow decides to rip off the HTTPS in front of the URLs. Hmm, strange. I'm Akash Deepthar, and I work as a lead representative for an objective in Fedora Council as an engineer and then as an engineer in the Red Hat Community Platform Engineering team. Over the course of the next 25 minutes or so, I'll be talking about the state of gaming in Genial Linux desktop distributions, as well as, of course, in Fedora Workstation. Moving on. So what would we talk about? In a broad sense, we'll be talking about these three points that you see on your screen. The first being how popular the Linux gaming scene it is, how convenient it is to set up Linux gaming, and how good it performs. We'll have a comparison of sorts that helps us understand how far exactly we have come from our humble roots and what factors have been of and are of and will be of uh, to account for, for this development. Do note that the starting sections will be general to entire Genial Linux game community because we in Fedora Linux, we like to believe that we can grow much faster if we are collectively putting our resources together and growing together. All right then, starting with the popularity of GNU Linux gaming, is it going places? From the times, uh, there we go. From the times where we were limited to complex setup procedures, difficult travel installation methods, and you know these were one of the reasons why people were keeping themselves off from Linux gaming, to the new times, which include having maintainers putting their time and effort into making sure that the enthusiasts actually feel like staying back. The documentations are a lot streamlined now, and even huge corporates, they see potential in those performance numbers, which made them want to you know, invest in these things. And we have dedicated platform for emulation, for handheld gaming, for streaming video games. I just think that we're only getting started. So yeah, things do have changed for the better. Moving on, to a great extent, I think that we owe our popularity to these wonderful communities. The likes of Gaming on Linux, Linus Tech Tips, the Linux Experiment, Genial Linux Gaming subreddit. So please feel free to take a look at the slide deck. It will have all the QR codes uh, that you can scan to know more about these things. Let's talk about the convenience in Genial Linux Gaming now, shall we? Is it easy enough? From the time that we were limited to reading between the lines of long documentation, boring stuff, and continually interacting with the software that people did not even heard of, and of course, having to indulge in some black magic related command lines, have we have things changed from that? Let's find out. Right now, it's all cakewalk for people. A community of users actually came together to tell about the things that they found difficulties in and the things that they found were easy. And with that, we found out that, yeah, there can be graphical user interfaces that people can use to achieve stuff. And these are well-documented, so you don't quite interact with stuff that maybe you're not aware of. So yeah, things do have changed and for better. Talking about these applications uh, that were instrumental in making things convenient for the users, you can find all these applications in our repositories, starting from Portals, Lutris, Play on Linux, and Retroarch. Then again, please feel free to open up the slide deck and scan the QR code to know more about these applications. And finally, let's talk about some performance numbers. Coming to performance side of things, is it achieving heights? From the times when we were bound to experiencing substandard frame rates due to inefficient translation, visual artifacts, glitches, unrendered shadows and textures due to graphical API conversion inefficiencies and inconsistencies in frame rates here and there. So 
people would be like, yeah, I'm having a good frame rate, but it suddenly dips down to a sub 20s or sub 30s, which is totally a no go. Have things changed? With developers putting their time into maintaining stuff and building new technologies, we have faster frame rates due to precise and accurate uh, translation of platform exclusive instructions. Thanks to translating graphical instructions, DirectX to Vulkan with the use of DXVK, DirectX 12 to Vulkan using VKD3D. We have stunning visuals and it's all done in an efficient manner. So you're not dishing out your performance or a lot of power to achieve such a performance. So low frame rates, graphical glitches and artifacts are all a thing of the past. You would not face inconsistencies in most of the games out there. So talking about the projects that were responsible for making these things happen, these softwares are also available on their latest and greatest versions in Fedora Linux, so totally feel free to check them out. Gamescope, Wine, Ferrell's Game Mode, and Steam Proton. And as always, these QR codes are there in the slide deck that I just linked in the start of the presentation, so you can totally scan them and feel free to take a look at them to know more about what these softwares are all about. But let's hold on right there. It's all good and stuff with the entire Genie Linux gaming community, but how exactly does Fedora Workstation fit in this equation? Let me answer that question. Over the course of the next few slides, we will go over some benchmark reports comparing Fedora Linux with other platforms such as Windows 10 with respect to gaming. Statutory information for newbies, for ensuring that they know exactly where they're going at if they feel like that, yeah, this is the right time for them to take the leap and start using GNU Linux distributions for gaming. And finally, the things that gaming enthusiasts can do on Fedora Linux, well, apart from gaming, that is. Let's start then, shall we? All right, now, now we have a lot of numbers on the slide deck, don't we? Beginning with Remedy Entertainment's Control, which released in 2019, as good a game as it is, it's personally one of my favorite games. It also had great tests on how good a platform is for rendering, for playing that stuff. Let me go over with the start from the frame rate. Fedora Linux has had around 12.5% of frame rate loss. Not a good thing, but a negligible difference if you don't have the statistics appearing on the screen. So kudos to the maintainers who worked on minimizing the gap from a large gap from just sub tens. Then we had average of 6.25% of less GPU power being used, which makes Fedora Linux a worthy distribution for trying it out on handheld devices, which don't have enough power or they're battery powered for that matter. With around roughly 2.5% of more CPU power usage, it's uh, pretty much a margin of error for that matter, but the gap is progressively going to go down as we speak. And finally, the memory usage. Fedora Linux is averaging around 56.25% lesser RAM usage as compared to Windows 10, all thanks to a lighter deck that we have around. This is something that I tried out with GNOME and who knows how big of a difference uh, we would have if we tried some lighter desktop environments or tiling Windows managers for that matter. I will link one of my articles so you don't really have to take my word for it. That you can totally feel free to check out right now. It's still on Fedora Magazine and we go way in detail about these statistics and how we were able to figure out the performance and how exactly is Fedora Workstation able to do so. Moving on, the next thing that I would like to talk about is Ubisoft's Far Cry 5, which came out in 2018. It's an open world game, a real torture for gaming devices, or like I like to say it, a real proving ground for platforms to prove their worth. So we are all in the green over here. What's the matter? 
with HD textures turned on, in an average, we have approximately 62.5% more frame rate, approximately 21.25% of lesser video memory usage, and roughly 31.25% of lesser RAM. The trend is continuing with non sd textures, although the difference slightly decreases when it comes to frame rate. So we have 56.25% of more frame rate, 31.25% of lesser video RAM usage, and roughly 36.25% of lesser RAM usage. So I guess with lesser uh, non sd textures, the game becomes a bit more CPU bound. So the performance is not that apparent, even though the difference between the video RAM usage as well as the system RAM usage is significantly high. So we see that Fedora Linux is clearly in the green over here. And it's not just being clearly in the green, but it's being in a large margin by making it evident that things do have changed down here and by a lot. Please keep your eyes out for the Fedora magazine because I would be following these claims up with an actual study uh, with graphs, charts, and all nerdy stuff. And about how Fedora Workstation was able to achieve this. I don't know why I call this section notice, but well, it is something that people should keep an eye out for, especially newcomers. So there are things that people should take care of before jumping into Fedora Workstation or on any GNU Linux distributions for that matter. Just letting in the folks know that grass is not only green on the other side, but it's RGB. Sorry for the bad joke. Um, all right, then. Let's start off with the incompatibilities. Look, there can be games that would require some DRMs, some certain kind of services running in the background to make sure that some anti-cheat measures are running. Those things are a work in progress on Linux. Even though they work just as fine on the other platforms, because well, those were the platforms those applications were written for. But uh, there are developers who are working on Steam Proton, for example, who are making sure that these are working as well for Linux with just as good of a performance, if not more, in these places. So it will be a time before these games would be able to run. So please hold on. And for the games that are running, they might require some more patches for them to look, feel, and perform better. There can be games that are, let's say, exclusive to a certain graphical API. So they might have some visual glitches. Totally feel free to uh, wait as the developers and maintainers are introducing their patches, which they will. And finally, Fedora Linux can look and feel different for the most popular platforms. And as much as I see it as a good thing, I can understand that people can be habituated to a certain platform in the way they look and feel. So totally pick a desktop environment that is easier to get, uh, to get into and which looks similar to the desktop environment that you used to use before. And maybe from there on, uh, move on to a different looking desktop environment. And that is how a shift to a GNU Linux distribution a desktop one at that will be a much more smoother one. And I can assure you that you'd be enjoying your time here. And look, as we speak about all the great stuff and not so great stuff about gaming on Fedora Linux, there are devs and maintainers putting in their time and effort to making sure that your favorite video game runs just as fast. And if possible, like shown in Far Cry 5, even more faster than it does on the other platform. So a big, big shout out to them. For enthusiasts, you could use Fedora Linux for building video games as there are multiple proprietary and free and open source software available on Linux to do so. You could also use Fedora Linux to play games. Well, this slide deck has been all about that. With stunning visuals, with optimized power usage, and blazing fast performance. Finally, you could join us in a friendly community to share your experiences, you know, finding some friends to play your games with along with sharing your configuration as to how you were able to do so. Linux is all about sharing. 
Right. So I do think that we have some time for some benchmarks, don't we? Let me stop sharing my screen and show some numbers. I guess that would be the right thing to do. Where is the close button? Hmm, there it is. So now that I close the slide deck, let's see some numbers. Folks, please let me know if the screen is visible to you. Uh, use a thumbs up or a yes or something like that. Thanks, Anurag, Jason, and Claudio. All right, then. Um, at the top left side of the screen, you see something that we like to call Mango Herd. It's a free and open source counterpart of something in the likes of MSI Afterburner that we use in Windows, which helps you to analyze the performance that you get to see in games, and it works for all kinds of games. It does not have to be a game running on Wine or a native game for that matter, because this thing clearly is not a native game. Uh, we have CPU metrics, CPU metrics, the RAM used in the system, as well as the video memory. And finally, in the very, very short way, I don't know if you are able to see it clearly or not, we have the model of the GPU that we are making use of. This GPU right here uses RDNA2. And if you know what RDNA2 is, or if you don't, let me tell that to you. RDNA2 is the underlying technology for Steam Deck, and it's pretty much the underlying technology for the APU that they make use of. So you can be pretty sure that if you factor in the battery, the handheld nature of the device, you could totally uh, have this performance represent that performance with those things kept in mind. But enough of speaking. Let's look into some benchmarking. But before that, Let's look into the settings that we have over here. We have every single thing set to Ultra, because why not? Fedora Linux is totally capable of doing so. And well, I don't like motion blur, to be honest. It looks, the implementation of, of it looks a lot stupid, in my opinion. But then again, just to make sure that we are testing our device and our platform in the best case possible, I'm going to turn it on. And then we have, the vsync turned off because we want to make sure that the game is not uh, limiting its frame rate to the refresh rate of the monitor, but rather going as high or low as possible. Because it's not just about how good the Fedora Linux performs. If it's the consistency which are there, we should know about it and we should work towards making sure that those consistencies don't happen. And finally, we have set the resolution scale to one which essentially means that if the game is rendered in 1080p, so with the models and so with the, the geometry, the textures and everything else inside the game. So enough of the metrics chat. Feel free to take your screenshots if you can, but I guess this thing would be recorded, so you need not do so. Let's test this game in the benchmark and the platform as well. That's what we're here for. I do want to note that uh, the video feed that you would be receiving at your end might look a bit choppy because this thing is not a dedicated streaming platform as Discord or something else might be. So if it's choppy, it's fine. But please take a look at the frame rates at the statistics of CPU and GPU usages, both in terms of their clock speed, their wattages, as well as uh, the memory usage. And that would be representative of what uh, Fedora Linux is capable of. Oh, did I forget to mention that we do not endorse any kind of violence that's taking place in this benchmark? No, we don't. It's a, a work of fiction, and we'd like to say just like that. All righty then. We do get to see some dips all the way down to. 120, mm, not good. Maybe there's something that we can do to improve upon that. But we have an average of 167, which is pretty great. It, it's like a, a couple of frame rates more than a refresh rate. And I see Bob saying that minimum of 120 is not good. Well, Bob, 
we like to think that when, when it comes to gaming, when it comes to performance, we'd like to have as low, less of limits as possible. So if we can get more than 120 of a uh, minimum frame rate, we totally should. Um, and it went all the way up to a maximum of 240, which is fine. I mean, there are places where there are not a lot of textures, not a lot of models, you know, in the last part of the uh, benchmark. When it all passed to the sky, there's just one plane and some trees in the distance. So not a lot of work that needs to be done over there. But to be honest, the maximum frame rate is not a representative of the performance, and so is the minimum. What's representative of the performance is the average one. And what's representative even more is your experience while playing it. Because keep in mind, 167 of an average frame rate is good, but it might happen that it might have some stutters in between that a benchmark won't be able to clearly display. And believe me when I say it, and you'll get to know about that in some metrics that I'll be putting out in Fedora Magazine, that these inconsistencies that I'm talking about were a thing in past, I agree, but they are not existent anymore, at least not in this game. And I'll keep trying the games as they come out. Right, so the number of frame reads, frames rendered, which is pretty much the duration for which this thing run for, and the average frame rate multiplied by it, 986 for pretty much a score, which is great for a Linux distribution, even more so when it's running with all the settings turned to high and the HD textures turned on. Keep in mind that the VRAM that the game shows you is like 4.3 GB, but the one that you get to see at the top left side of the screen is almost like 6.2. What's going on over here? So simply put, the VRAM that the video game computes is an estimate. It's estimated on a certain set of hardware that people may or may not have. So if people supposedly had that hardware, they would have a 4.3 GB of VRAM usage. I don't seem to have that. So I have somewhere around 6.2, which is pretty less as compared to what uses that we get to see on other platforms. The same goes for memory. And I guess we have to thank the, the environment that we're using for that because GNOME uses such less memory and such less video memory from the ground up that it almost leaves everything else for what's important. If you want to run your games or some scientific application that requires your GPU, you can have your uh, performance buffer totally dedicated to that stuff. And none of that, or let's just say less amount of it, very little amount of it, would be used by your actual Linux distribution. But that's about it for the performance. I'll stop sharing my screen. Or uh, maybe just, yep, stop sharing and start sharing the slide deck again. So give me a moment, folks. Hmm. Present. Share a window. Oh, did I mention that all these tests were done on Wayland? So we get to see all the uh, good stuff that Wayland could provide you with. And no, 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 I'm not going to let you through all the uh, presentation from the very start. We are going to skip to the end. And right, there we are. Geez, now that the NVIDIA drivers are getting open sourced, I don't know if you're following the news, but I certainly am, and you should look for them as well. And the Steam Deck making sure that Linux gaming is becoming mainstream. I cannot wait to see what future holds for us. And I don't know if it's the year for Linux desktop, but I'm sure as hell that this year would definitely be for Linux gaming and the years that will come as well. Uh, it's, it does not have to be people who have huge GPUs or great configured rigs in order to be able to play these games. As evidenced by our performance results, Linux is able to render just as much of a performance and to a certain extent even more while using lesser resources. So if you feel like that you'd want to give this a try, now is the best time to do so. Uh, with all the helpful applications out there, totally feel free. Hey there, Marie. Hi, it's been going great. Um, I really hope I have... that I did not skip over the time. Oh, no, you haven't. We're at five minutes, too. 
the end of the session, so I figured I'd jump in and we could do a couple questions. If anyone has more questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A now. All right, first one is, what was the hardware specs when you test? Because numbers you're sharing could be different based on hardware as well as W10 version also. Right, so uh, the thing is, I try to make sure that the software that I'm using is as recent as possible, both for Windows as well as for Fedora, to have a fair uh, uh, comparison. So I'm running Fedora 36 as the software, and the Windows 10 version is updated to the most recent version. When it comes to the hardware, I'm using a Radeon RX 6800 XT. It's a fairly uh, recent GPU with uh, a great amount of frame buffer as well as the 5900X as the CPU. I hope that answers your question, Munrad. Cool. All right, next question. Do you think using a custom kernel like Xan Mod provides better performance over the normal kernel? Yep, it can, but it depends on the hardware. If you have a more recent hardware, it can help to a greater extent. Uh, the very point of this presentation was to make sure that the people who don't have a lot of experience in Linux, let alone in Linux gaming, can actually be able to do so in a matter of clicks. So, well, just install a software from GNOME software called Lutris, and it's a GUI, so you can download a Wine from it and then install stuff from there on. The very fact that it has become more accessible to people and they don't have to be a command line magician. Or an, or an engineer for that matter. That is the emphasis that makes uh, streams that Linux gaming is now becoming more and more mainstream and it does not have to be engineers who are able to do so. It's not limited. Cool. Someone in the chat here is saying that Elden Ring works better on Linux than Windows. That's true. Uh, I gave Elden Ring a try as well. Uh, but owing to the fact that I need to run some tests on it, you know, get some nice looking graphs like I did for uh, Far Cry 5 for uh, Control as well. So I'm going to wait on it, but you'll probably see some results on that in Fedora Magazine pretty soon. Uh, I like to see that Fedora State of Gaming, Fedora Workstation State of Gaming is going to be a recurring thing where I'll be publishing some reports to prove the fact that, yeah, there are things that Fedora Linux has improved upon. And then there are things that Fedora Linux could potentially improve upon. So we are never the perfect uh, platform, but we are a platform that keeps on growing and keeps on becoming better. All right, this isn't a question from the chat. It's actually a question for me. Um, are you aware of any development for the Steam Deck with Fedora? Um, well, some, a couple of years ago, I do remember that uh, there were rumors about Fedora Workstation or just Fedora Linux being used as a base for the Steam Deck OS. But I suppose it was one of the rumors. People are trying to make sure that Fedora Linux works in the current state in Steam Deck because, well, Steam uh, did a good work on Steam Deck. The platform is open. People can totally install Windows on it if they want to. And when it comes to Fedora, I think there's a custom spin of Fedora called Nobara Workstation. An engineer from Red Hat uh, who goes by the name of Glorious Eggroll, nice name. He is maintaining that stuff. And there are a lot of packages that you can install on uh, Fedora as well. It's in the copper repositories. So you don't have to install a custom version of Fedora when you can just install Fedora and those packages are on the top of Fedora Linux to be able to do the same thing. So to answer that question, Marie, uh, all I have are rumors, but uh, you know from the past. But right now, I've seen people who are trying that stuff out, and they have some good results. Cool. There's a question here in the chat, um, just to the chat, but I'll I'll also ask you real quick. This will be our last one. Do you think that okay. pipe Pipewire helps with Linux as a gaming platform? Um. It does, but then again, to not a greater extent, because uh, it does help in recording stuff, in streaming stuff. So if people are using uh, Linux as a streaming platform, popular streamers like, take for instance, uh, some ordinary gamers on YouTube, if they use Fedora Linux as the uh, preferred gaming 
or streaming platform, it would help them. But if you're just gaming by yourself and your friends and you're not streaming, I don't think it would be of that help.